Good evening. Welcome to tonight's video. This is part two of I Work for an Interdimensional Organization, written by Pimp Demon, or known on Reddit, Nassar the Dancer. I am honestly excited with reading this part and narrating it, and I do hope you're enjoying the series as we continue. Without further ado, part two. Kyle, could you please put me down? You know I can walk by myself, I said with an annoyed tone as I was carried down the hallway. Sorry, my bro, but I can't do that since you might like to totally escape. Besides, this will be fun. Just trust me, bro. Kyle replied with his very relaxed tone. I groaned before simply throwing my hands up in defeat before looking towards the end of the hallway. After a while of looking, I could finally see the two entities were none other than Zeus and Dracula. Not the Dracula you think. Zeus is a humanoid, albeit skinny-looking entity, made out of some unknown lightning-like energy. He is dressed in ancient-looking Greek-style armor, covered in golden-like symbols, which constantly change positions on the armor every minute. From what I heard from Kyle and a few others, Zeus comes from a reality very similar to my own. The only difference is that humanity is set in a sort of ancient Greek age but with magic. Also, he never talks in the literal sense since he's mute. Instead, he uses his thoughts to speak to entities who can, well, you know, read thoughts. Also, you should never touch him since touching him will shock you with a volt of, as my friend Kyle put it, it's like a thunderbolt from my bro Zapdos. This is when Zeus doesn't want to hurt you. As for how Kyle knows this, well, let's just say Kyle and Zeus had some fun, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I don't know much more about him since I can't read thoughts, and he's a very private entity. Then there's Dracula. Pale, white-skinned, 20-year-old looking human with red eyes, slicked back white hair, dressed in a black suit with a silver buttoned waistcoat and a red tie. He also had a cane with him everywhere he went, and of course, he's a vampire. A very old and powerful vampire that's lived for several centuries who is from the same reality where I come from. I looked up at Kyle with an in incredibly nervous look. Hey Kyle? Are Dracula and Zeus going to join us? Of course they are. I mean, like, they are totally my teammates and all that stuff. I wouldn't want to be, like, rude and not let them join. He said as he dropped me to the floor. I groaned softly as I slowly got up. In doing so, I saw Dracula look at me before looking at Kyle. Hey, Kyle. Who is these kids you brought? Dracula asked in a very tired tone that I didn't expect given his appearance. Oh, right. This is my friend James. He's gonna join us in our next mission. Right? Kai looked at me, and so did Dracula and Zeus. Oh. Yeah, I yeah. am. Well, I guess welcome to the team, James. The name's Dracula, and over there is Zeus, Dracula said before he grabbed my hand and shook it, while Zeus simply waved once at me. Well, that went, like, much better than I thought. Now, let's totally go now. Kyle began smiling more as he pressed something on his pocket watch. Wait, shouldn't we come up with a plan? Before I could finish my sentence, I was blinded by a purple light. After a few seconds, the light went away. When it did, the first thing I noticed was a large lake in front of me. I then began looking around and realized two things. Number one, I was in some sort of forest in the middle of the night. Number two... I was alone. Oh, of course this would happen. I better start looking for Kyle and the others, I mumbled to myself, before I started looking around for Kyle and the others. After walking for about 20 minutes, I suddenly saw a light of a bonfire a bit further into the forest. I started walking towards the light. It didn't take long for me to arrive at the light, and when I did, I was face to face with Kyle and the others who were sitting around a bonfire eating goddamn burgers while a pile of unconscious entities were behind them. James, about time you like caught here. 
we've been waiting for, like very long for you to arrive. I mean, like seriously, we almost done all the job without you. Kyle said while eating a burger and leaning against a tree. I looked at them for about 10 very long seconds before I replied with, Okay, first off, how did you manage all of this in 20 minutes? Second, how many entities came to this place? There was a breach in the dimensional prison. About 20 entities escaped, and I'm assuming they all just used the same portal. Dracula replied as I sat down in front of them. Let me get this straight. You were tasked to bring back the prisoners from the most secure prison in the multiverse, and you decide to drag a non-hunter into this. I should be surprised, but the fact I'm dealing with Kyle and it was most likely his idea, I'm not. Now how many are left? I said as I let out a sigh before grabbing one of the burgers and started eating it. Indeed, this is all correct like a, a good job, and there's like two entities left, Kyle said. All right, you got any information about them? Like, how powerful they are? Do they have any special abilities or something? I asked. One of them is a 25 feet or about 7.62 meters tall humanoid entity dressed in medieval armor covered in golden vines with thorns on them. It also had a massive sword on its back made of some unknown metal. At least that's one of the entity's appearances, Dracula said. I looked at him with a raised eyebrow when he said that last thing. What do you mean by that? I asked him. Well, apparently every time someone blinks, the entity's appearance will change. This includes its weapon as well. The only thing that was the same is the entity's head. There is nothing where the head should be, well, almost nothing but two pairs of deer antlers floating in the air connected by some kind of black string that came out of the neck. And that's about it when it comes to this entity. The only thing else the file said was it's extremely powerful, Dracula said as he finished drinking blood from one of the unconscious entities. I see. Well, what about the other one? After I asked this, Kyle was the one who replied this time. Don't let it touch you, is all the file said. Anyway, let's go on him down. Kyle said in his very relaxed voice as he and the others started walking deeper into the forest. I followed after them while thinking about why the twitching man's file was so short. I did not have a good feeling about it. Ooh, part two. Fred just simply kidnaps his friend James. Hey, let's go on an adventure. Let's bring two of my best buddies with me. Let's go screw some shit up. Kyle definitely sounds like a blast of parties. Ah, another interesting one. Definitely fun, fast-paced. Curious how part three shall turn out. And thank you, Pimp Demon, for letting me narrate the series as it goes on. And if I'm being honest, I really can't wait for the further parts. And I, I trust you to write them, well, fun interesting and with a good story about it as of recording i have two patrons pimp demon the author of the story and lichen trucker i am deeply grateful for both of these two donations towards my patreon i will leave the link in the description feel free to sign up if you'd like it is not expected but deeply appreciated that said I hope you enjoyed what you've heard tonight, and I do wish you a fantastic rest of your day, night, evening, afternoon, morning, whatever day or time of day it may be for you. And do remember, there's so much we've yet to understand in this world. <laughs>